My name is Bob Baylor, and I'm the Senior Director for Vaccines at Q-Square Solutions. Today, two of my colleagues and myself are going to give you a short technology overview of some of the methodologies available at Q-Square Solutions to help in the development of vaccines for SARS-CoV-2. Q-Square Solutions has a wide portfolio of different methodologies that are available for the full range of SARS-CoV-2 vaccine evaluations, as is shown in this slide. There are clearly too many different types of methods and services that we can cover in a short technology overview, so we're just going to focus on three key areas. First, I will give you a brief overview of the vaccine immunogenicity program that we have. Then I will turn it over to Mark Enninger, who's the head of our flow cytometry core, who will talk about the flow cytometry capabilities. Next, I will turn it over to Pat Urban, who will give us an overview of the genomics testings that are available in his area of Q-squared solutions. Vaccine immunogenicity testing is based on our Center of Vaccine Excellence, which is located in San Juan Capistrano, California. This slide gives you an overview of the different methodologies that we have available for SARS-CoV-2 vaccine evaluations and the estimated timing for the assays to be available for clinical trials. We will go through these one at a time, first focusing on ELISA methodologies. For ELISA, we're developing a multiplex assay platform that uses Luminex beads. The target antigens that we're using for this assay include S1, S2, S1 plus S2, including the extracellular domain and the receptor binding domain. In addition, we're including the nucleocapsid region. In case vaccine developers might have a key antigen for their specific vaccine, we can also add that to our assay format to allow the assay to meet the specific needs of a vaccine developer. Clearly, there are multiple advantages to this type of technology. First and foremost, using five different antigens allows you to develop a full immune profile of the vaccine-induced response. This may indicate some unique profiles that correlate to vaccine immunogenicity or a correlate of protection in your recipients of your vaccine. Obviously, the assay is a high throughput assay and the fact that you're running five different assays at the same time. This helps to conserve samples, which is especially important when you're using uh, pediatric trials. Q-squared solution, this is well on its way towards the deployment of the assay for clinical testing. We have completed the antigen selection, method development, and are just about ready to start on assay qualification, where we anticipate the assay will be ready for clinical testing by September of this year. Q-Square Solutions is located on a scientific campus with the infrastructure to permit us to have a fully scalable operation where we can staff three shifts per day. This slide gives you an overview of what throughput of the assay will be. An individual analyst can analyze 100 samples per day. As detailed here, we can scale up to six analysts where you can do as many as 3,600 samples per month. But that's just the beginning. We can clearly go to more analysts and higher throughput to meet the specific needs of your clinical trial. Now turning to serum neutralization assays. Quantitation of neutralizing antibodies is paramount in the evaluation of an effective vaccine. Based upon the long history of Q-squared solutions in this testing area, we are in a unique position to help you in your vaccine development. As indicated here, we have been involved over the decades in the licensure of a variety of different vaccines using neutralizing antibody assays deployed in our laboratory. Given the unique characteristics of the SARS-CoV-2 and the need for a cutting edge reporter virus, we are collaborating with academic institutions to provide us those type of methodologies. The key goals of this type of methodology is to use a reporter virus that adds sensitivity to the methodologies. We want an assay that's safe and can be done in a BSL-2 laboratory as opposed to a BSL-3 laboratory. And foremost importance is that we have a good correlation between our reporter virus assay to that what you would get in a BSL-3 assay running the wild type virus. Obviously, all of our assays are geared towards the spike protein, which is the leading protein involved in vaccine development for SARS-CoV-2. We're pursuing two parallel paths for neutralization assays. The idea being is that we will pick the best assay at the very end, but pursuing two assays will assure rapid deployment of an effective solution. The first methodology that we're using is viral-like particles. For this, you start with the wild type SARS-CoV-2 virus, delete the structural genes, add the reporter gene and a neomycin resistant to construct what is called a replicon. 
In parallel, you construct a cell line that expresses those structural genes that when infected with the replicon allows for trans complementation to package the viral particles. The VLPs or viral-like particles is run in an assay using the Vero cells that, it, that express the ACE2 receptor, which is important for SARS-CoV-2. The alternate approach that we're pursuing is using a vesticular stomatitis virus, pseudovirus expression system. This is a very common reporter virus-based system where the SARS-CoV-2 spike region is inserted into the VSV backbone in addition to a reporter gene. In this case, we're using neon green. We're collaborating with the leading academic institution to license this technology, which has already been published. Presented here is the timeline for our VLP or viral light particle assay. We are making great progress on this project, where to date we have developed the structural gene expressing cell line and shown proof of concept of the method and anticipate the qualified method will be available in October of this year. In terms of our parallel methodology for VSV, we are working with our, our uh, potential collaborator who's published met this methodology and has shown a very good correlation between his methodology and the wild type assays. We completely anticipate that this timeline for this will also be in the October timeline of this year. Like the ELISA methodology, we have a scalable operation in the Vaccine for Center Excellence in San Juan Capistrano. This gives you an idea of what our throughput would be an individual operator can do as many as 200 samples per week. Where we could scale up is shown here, depending on the needs of your sample throughput. Where this table illustrates the throughput for six analysts, we can scale the operation to meet the demands of your clinical trials. Now turning to some of the other methods available for vaccine evaluation, they are all listed here. I will defer to the T-cell response, given that Mark will be speaking about this in just a few moments. In addition here, we've listed epitope mapping, which is an exploratory methodology that we can provide. You, the utility of this methodology would be the full definition of the target epitopes in the vaccine recipients. The value here may be for vaccine developers in defining next generation and vaccine design to drive to the desired immune response induced by their vaccine. Q-Square Solutions is here to help you in your efforts to develop and license an effective SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. So we are happy to work with you to deploy other high throughput testings that you may need. I'm now going to turn it over to Mark Enninger, who will give you a brief overview of flow cytometry capabilities for SARS-CoV-2 vaccine evaluation. Thanks, Bob. Q-Square Solutions has the largest global flow cytometry delivery network of any CRO. We have seven global laboratories, as well as three partner laboratories. In our seven global laboratories, we offer eight, 10, and 30 plus color assays running on eight and 10 color fax candles, as well as the 30 plus color SciTech Aurora. The Auroras are up and running in Valencia, California, Atlanta, Edinburgh, Singapore, Tokyo, and Beijing. We have dedicated flow cytometry assay validation scientists, instruments and facilities in the translational science laboratories in Edinburgh and Atlanta, with additional dedicated capability in Valencia and Beijing. We validated more than 60 flow cytometry assays in 2019 and assayed more than 200,000 flow samples globally in 2019 as well. Since 2012, we have validated almost 700 flow cytometry assays. Currently, there are over 300 active assays in our catalog that are available for use. Many of the assays we have validated are custom fit for purpose assays that are sponsor and trial specific. This slide provides an idea of the broad range of assays and assay formats with which we are familiar. There are a broad range of assays we routinely perform that includes simple lineage and subset enumeration, as well as proliferation, activation, exhaustion, and functional assays for T cell, B cell, NK and innate lymphoid cells, monocytes and macrophages, as well as neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. We also routinely perform assays for antigen-specific T cells, tumor and filtrating lymphocytes, minimal residual disease, receptor occupancy, and intracellular assays for transcription factors such as FOXP3, helios, and as well as proteins and cytokines. We routinely process sample types that include whole blood, bone marrow, PBMC, fine needle aspirates, lymph node, tissue, and other body fluids. We can provide a catalog of validated assays that are available in our global labs that may be of use in COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 vaccine trials. 
After an extensive review of the current literature, we have compiled and continue to compile a list of the populations and subpopulations that are of particular interest as relates to COVID-19 trials and SARS-CoV-2 vaccine trials. As you can see, there are a large number of populations from multiple sample types that may be best monitored by flow cytometry. There is a broad range of assay formats represented here that includes surface and intracellular assays, functional assays, and in particular, quantitative assays for absolute counting of populations of interest. Because of the large number of requests we have received for intracellular assays for cytokine expression from various cell lineages part of ongoing and new COVID-19 to SARS-CoV-2 vaccine trials, we are currently validating a 21-color assay on the SciCheck Aurora that encompasses all the requests we've received and that can be run globally on fresh and banked PBMCs. It can also be validated for whole blood upon request. The cytokines that are measured in this panel include interferon gamma, IL-2, IL-4, IL-5, IL-10, IL-17, IL-21, and TNF-alpha. We have also included additional markers that allow enumeration of naive memory effector and effector memory T cells as well as T peripheral helper cells, NK cells, monocytes, and activated T and NK cells. It should be kept in mind for this assay that COVID-19 patients are often lymphopenic and that when PBM samples are prior preserved, that sufficient material be processed to allow the successful assaying of these samples. It is also very important, as this is a functional assay, that the samples be processed within 24 hours by a method that maintains cellular function. We currently recommend the CTL method that provides fully functional cells upon thawing without the need to rest cells at 37 degrees overnight. The CTL method is published and is available on the Cellular Technologies website. This method is available in our Valencia, Atlanta, and Edinburgh and Singapore laboratories and will soon be available in Beijing as well. In addition to the standard intracellular cytokine panel, we are also validating a 30-color standard immunophenotyping panel for general use. This panel has been designed to allow enumeration of the most requested cell lineages and subsets, including TB, NK, monocyte, dendritic cell subsets, neutrophils, and eosinophils. Thanks for your time today. I hope this has been of interest to you. Next is Pat Urban, who will present our molecular assay offerings for COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 trials. We now turn our attention to genomics. Specifically, we can think of both host genomics as well as viral genomics. So if we think about host genomics, those are things like, are there variants within the host genome that render that host more or less susceptible to infection? Or are there features of the host transcriptome, the genes that are expressed in response uh, to challenge by the virus that may inform our therapeutic or vaccine strategies? Well, today I'm gonna focus primarily on uh, assessments of the viral genome itself, specifically detection by RT-PCR and viral genome sequencing using next generation sequencing technologies. So first, if we think about molecular testing and vaccine trials, the FDA has issued guidance specifically for COVID-19 vaccine development. And as part of that guidance, they state that SARS-CoV-2 infection should be a primary endpoint, and that for acute cases especially, they should be virologically confirmed, and that means by RT-PCR methodology. Now, they also go on to state that infection, whether or not it is symptomatic, minimally it should be at least a secondary or exploratory endpoint, but there seems to be a real preference to make it a primary endpoint. And so in response to this, our testing strategy for vaccine trials includes a couple of key points. First, we want to ensure that we have sustained availability of not only the test itself, the reagents, the devices necessary, but also a means to collect and preserve that sample. We've already worked out all of the logistics for um, collecting those samples, uh, transporting them within stability, et cetera. We also want to make sure that we have a redundancy in our testing locations, and we want to be able to make this uh, any assay that we offer available broadly. Second, we do want to have a path for viral load assays to support exploratory endpoints, although to be clear, we typically see the need for viral load assays more in therapeutic trials than in vaccine trials. So we've chosen the Roche SARS-CoV-2 kit, which is run on the COVID-6800 platform. This has been designated with an EUA, an emergency use authorization, by the FDA. And so we have it currently available in two locations, Edinburgh 
in the UK, as well as Valencia, California, where our central laboratory has now processed well over 150,000 samples uh, for SARS-CoV-2 infection using this particular assay. We see the ability potentially to expand in our Singapore and China laboratories, but that will only be possible if we're permitted to do so by the local authorities. Meanwhile, as I mentioned, we want to ensure that there is sustained availability of testing. And so we've verified another assay that has also been uh, designated under the FDA emergency use authorization, and that is the Thermo Fisher TACPATH COVID-19 combo kit. We view this primarily for qualitative testing purposes as a backup solution, and we've verified it in our Valencia, California laboratory, as well as in our Research Triangle Park uh, laboratory. Meanwhile, we are using that same kit, the Thermo Fisher TACPATH uh, assay. We are transforming it into a quantitative viral load assay. Uh, this, of course, is a laboratory developed test. It's not FDA approved. And we now have it currently available for swabs and for plasma, and we're working on other sample types as well. So that summarizes our detection strategies uh, for SARS CoV 2. What about the viral genome itself? Well, why is the viral genome important? Well, understanding it is very important for a couple of different reasons, but ultimately we know that viruses evolve, their genomes evolve. And in fact, in the upper left-hand corner, um, you can see a depiction of the various forms of the virus and how they have evolved over time and how those different forms of the virus uh, have become more or less prevalent in different regions of the world. And in fact, just below that, you can see a linear depiction of the viral genome with uh, various tick marks in different places. And each of those tick marks correspond to the frequency at which mutations are seen in uh, certain parts of the virus. Well, why is this important? Well, take, for example, the spike protein. The spike protein binds to the receptor, ACE2, by which it actually enters into cells. And so you might imagine that uh, changes to the makeup of that protein, variants, in other words, uh, to the spike protein, could lead to a higher binding or a tighter binding uh, to that uh, ACE2 receptor and may actually change some of the infection dynamics. And in fact, there is a spike protein variant, G614, which has become predominant. And in fact, it became predominant in a very short time frame. This has happened across essentially all geographies. And so it implies that there's actually a fitness advantage for that form of the virus. Um, it seems to be the case that that particular form of the virus, G614, is more infective than the D614. 14 um, uh, um, form of the virus, but it's still vulnerable to neutralizing antibodies in in vitro models where convalescent serum is used and shown to be effective against a pseudotyped virus, meaning that you you have a, a, a recombinant virus that has each particular form of the spike protein. And uh, you can see in the figure in the lower left-hand corner that with these different uh, sera from convalescent patients, we're actually able to show that we can diminish uh, the capacity of the virus uh, to uh, reproduce. So additional variants in the spike protein are known to exist, and they may have potential impact on binding to that ACE2 receptor, but all of that is still yet to be known. And so, of course, we want to be able to uh, support vaccine trials by seeing whether or not there are different forms of the virus to understand whether particular vaccine strategies are more or less effective against different forms of the virus. And so to characterize the viral genome, we have onboarded the Ion Ampliseq SARS-CoV-2 research panel. This is a viral sequencing assay that covers substantially the entire viral genome. There are 247 amplicons plus five human expression controls so that we know even in the absence of virus that we are still uh, getting good amplification. Uh, it covers greater than 99% of the SARS-CoV-2 genome, which is about 30 kilobases in size. size. And all of the potential serotypes are well covered by this, by this assay. Um, in laboratory testing with uh, purified copies of different uh, strains that are known, we found that we could see 
the 100% accuracy of variant calling for those different strains that we tested. We're also able to detect down to 210 viral copies in a single reaction. We verified this not only with synthetic controls, but also with positive clinical samples. And of course, we use the quantitative laboratory developed tests that we uh, determined to see how many copies we actually have. Now, what type of sample do we use here? Well, of course, we're dealing with viral RNA that we isolate from nasopharyngeal swabs or oral pharyngeal swabs. We are working on other sample types as well. And what we deliver is an assembly of that viral genome, as well as BAM files that are the reads that are aligned to the viral reference genome, a VCF file which uh, identifies the different variants that are called against that viral reference genome. And then we also annotate the variants uh, wherever information uh, is available to annotate those variants. So hopefully this gives you a brief outline of some of the molecular assessments we can perform to support your vaccine trials. Thank you, Pat, for that brief overview of genomics capabilities for evaluation of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines. And I thank both you and Mark for your time today in putting together this brief technology overview. Looking again at the list of technologies that are available for evaluation of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines at Q-Square Solutions is a very impressive list. Today, we only had time to talk about a few of these capabilities. Keep in mind, though, Q-Square Solutions has services located around the globe to meet your needs for the servicing of your vaccine clinical trials for SARS-CoV-2. Our services go beyond just immune monitoring. They include such things as logistics, kit building, and safety monitoring. Keep in mind, Q-Square Solutions is fully dedicated in the development and licensure of a SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. We're all in this together, and we're here to help meet your needs. There's never been a more important time for Q-Square to live into our motto, which is we treat every sample like a life depends upon it. Thank you for your time.